the South American rainforest. Here on the Essequibo River in Guyana, the continent's biggest mammals, reptiles, and birds come out to play. The tapir, the anaconda, the caiman, and the harpy eagle. I'm Rainer Bergamatz, and this is Young Sandy. For 10 years, we've been challenging the rainforest, finding and filming the South American Big Four. The anaconda, the 200 kilo swimming snake, may grow to nine meters, but it's not the biggest, fastest, or longest lived predator on this continent. That honor goes to an even more terrifying creature, the mighty black caiman. We believe the ultimate rainforest predator reached the top through more than just brute force. We think there's a brain behind these teeth. Consciousness behind these eyes. And we're determined to find out. Virgin rainforest, impenetrable and unexplored. The river is the only highway here. And to find an undisturbed Cayman population, you have to go far upstream where no humans live. Cayman are the closest relative of the alligator, but they grow even bigger, up to seven meters long, weighing up to a ton. This part of the river is inhabited. Young's home village is nearby. It's a simple life here. No one has a motorboat. The river is the center of life. It's a road, a washing machine, and even a swimming pool. There are caiman here, but they're nothing to worry about, even for the children. The ones you see here are no more than three meters long, nose to tail. Humans and caiman can both live here, but it's an uneasy coexistence especially after nightfall. That's when the men of the village go on a rare caiman patrol. Nighttime is supposedly when the big caiman show themselves. The idea is to catch and take them upstream before they hurt someone from the village. But the Cayman have learned that light means people and danger. It means dive as fast as possible. After hours of searching, we find only small specimens. Nobody knows if the bigger, older animals are too clever to be spotted. In many places, they have all been killed. We plan to sail upriver to find caiman in their natural state, where they've rarely been observed. Soon, we leave all trace of human habitation behind. Traveling upstream, we come to the place where the Rupununi River merges with the Essequibo. This is where the adventure begins. 
The forest along the riverbank is getting thicker. But these black skimmers with their two-meter wingspan are the only wildlife to be seen at the water's edge. A while to go before the smaller animals dare emerge from the protection of the forest. several days before we expect to see an undisturbed group of black caiman with giant seven-meter adults. If capybara jump into the water when they hear the strange sound of an outboard motor, that means they aren't afraid of caiman here. The first night, the first campfire. Tomorrow will be a long day. Higher up, the river is dotted with so many islands you have to keep your wits about you. You can't always tell when you're branching off the main current. Which way we should take? Here, at the beginning of the dry season, the water is low enough to reveal sandbanks. That can mean getting out and pushing. There are razor-sharp rocks just below the surface, but the sand alone will jam a propeller in seconds. Come on. And the depth can be deceptive. These obstacles for us are resting places for animals. Like a spectacled caiman. And at last, the first black caiman, about three meters long, probably not yet six years old. We're just two days upriver, too soon for the seven meter giants. But Young spotted his favorite animal. Fork tongue and scales. He's found an anaconda. Pitting their strength against an anaconda is a favorite sport for Amerindians. Young knows the result in advance. A moment of relaxation for a family of capybara. These are the world's largest rodents, related to guinea pigs. They live near the water, and their Amerindian name translates as Lord of the Grass which pretty much sums them up. Anacondas love to hunt them, 
when they're not being tugged at by a human. This capybara dies in a few seconds from shock. The anaconda takes half an hour to swallow it whole. It won't have to eat again for another six months. Female anacondas are the biggest snakes in the world. The males are just half their size, no more than four meters long. This leaf easily supports their weight. Males will follow a female's mating scent for days. Several wrap themselves round her in a ball, trying to push each other out of the way. A number will mate with her before the knot loosens and the males go on their way. Six to eight months later, the female will give birth to up to 70 young, each about 60 centimeters long. That's how this great body evolved. To make space for all the young. This is a side arm of the Essequibo, which has changed its course. One day, this will dry up completely. Right now, no current means plenty of fish and plenty of giant otters. This is also the first place along the river where a full-sized caiman might be. The black vultures should be a good sign, but the carrion they've smelt, rainforest vultures rely on the scent, not the sight of rotting meat, comes as a surprise. This dead black caiman is probably the victim of another caiman. A fully grown tapir is a herbivore the size of a horse, South America's biggest mammal. His sheer bulk protects him against most predators, even caiman. But he's almost blind, so every unexplained sound frightens him. A quick spray reminds intruders we're in his territory. A caiman needs to sunbathe. It uses the sun to warm up its blood in the morning. It needs to stay between about 30 and 33 degrees, so it alternates between warm and cool places.
It rests again in the late afternoon when the baking sand and the rocks radiate the day's heat. When it gets too warm, it cools off in the water. Drifting half submerged, the scales of its armor plating are still absorbing solar power. It's this direct power supply that lets them eat much less often than birds or mammals and means they conserve energy. Giant otters, on the other hand, as mammals, have to eat several times a day. That makes them the biggest competitors for the caiman when it comes to fish. While the adult hunts, the pup waits on the sidelines. It won't be fed until the adult has eaten its fill. When fish are plentiful, otters only eat the juiciest parts and leave the rest. That can be quite a lot, but not everyone will be so choosy. Yeah, this is the remaining of the giant otters, so. Should we take it? Yeah, I think so. A caiman won't reject it, so we can use it as bait to get closer to the caiman, or to bring the caiman closer to us. Caiman seem to prefer fish to meat. They're even said to control the numbers of piranha in their territory. Piranha, the notorious predators of the rainforest rivers. Do they deserve their vicious reputation? There are nine species of piranha in Guyana. The so-called red-bellied piranha is the most common. While the giant black piranha grows up to 50 centimeters long. They're much more interested in their prey than in a cameraman. Aside from the piranhas, they're a banana fish. It's really a catfish. And here's a real curiosity. The biggest scaled fish in the world, the arapaima. In Brazil, they're almost extinct because of their delicious flesh. And even here in Diana, there are only a few places left to find the really big specimens, up to two meters long. These ancient fish have an air bladder that has turned into a kind of lung. Their gills alone don't provide them with enough oxygen. The arapaima has to surface like a whale to gulp down air. If they stayed underwater, they would drown. The caiman will eat all of them, even the rotten fish we've supplied, even served in a bucket. Unlike lizards and snakes, caiman have a two-compartment brain comparable to a mammal's. They can learn and can store what they've learned. And when they see vultures, they know that the coast is clear. A 
and if the caiman are relaxed, it's also pretty safe for me to approach them underwater. But my unfamiliar presence unsettles the caiman. He doesn't know how to react. He waits for me to withdraw and then slides into the water. We keep a respectful distance from each other. I got close, but not as close as I wanted. A curve of the river Essequibo has become completely cut off and has transformed itself into a lake, a fairy tale paradise, and a nursery for wildlife. Giant water lilies, Victoria Amazonica, flower here. Air pockets on their underside help them float. No baby animals can get washed away in the current. It seems to be a picture of peace. With life in abundance. It's also a nursery for baby caiman. A place to spend their first few years in relative safety. And a perfect place for us to observe the behavior of the young and their parents. But not quite yet. For the moment, a family of giant otters are fishing. And caiman and otters never share the same water at the same time. So we scan the riverbanks for a female caiman guarding her nest. She will stay here now for days on end. She knows the soft eggs she has laid are a delicacy for any number of species. Like this troop of peccaries. These aggressive wild pigs wander through the Guyanese rainforest in their hundreds. Any one of them could eat her eggs if she deserts the nest. Luckily for the caiman, she has a better sense of smell and hearing than a peccary. If it gets too close, She will let it know it's not wanted. And 
chase it back to its herd. But she'll never go too far from her nest and her 50 to 60 eggs. Baby caiman squeak even inside the egg. And that's how they synchronize their hatching. Within 10 minutes, they've all broken out. Some start moving away at once. Their cries bring their mother back to the nest to watch over them as they crawl out of their shells. The babies can't stay too long in the protection of their mother and their shells. Eventually, they have to get to the water to find their own food, because their mother can't feed them. It's a long and dangerous trek. Small groups of babies take it together. They're both prey and predator from the first second of their lives, with inborn instincts to snap at anything that moves. Except their own species. From now on, their prey will include small fish, insects and amphibians. Whatever will fit inside their jaws. This capybara is approaching a spot that a baby caiman already regards as its territory. Sometimes the small creature's eyes are bigger than its stomach. If aggression were enough, the capybara would have had its last wallow. Baby caiman look almost exactly like scaled down adults. It's impossible to tell the difference between males and females. While they're this size, 30 centimeters long, they're a tasty morsel. Only one in 10 will survive its first year. The rest will be prey. For fish, birds, otters, or anacondas. But if they know it's in trouble, an adult caiman will shield a baby caiman. The babies have a distress call they use until they're four years old. And young mimics it perfectly. 
Adults swim in from every side to see what's up. Caiman have very good hearing. Their ears are right behind their eyes, and when they dive, they're sealed by watertight flaps. We try a second experiment to see if Cayman associates sounds with specific meanings. Young plays a tape of a herd of peccaries, high on a Cayman's ideal menu. Sure enough, the peccaries' calls attract a number of caiman. They swim right up to us. And then they stop. They can't see the expected prey. They wait. Now, Young switches to the call of giant otters. These are a caiman's greatest competitors for fish. Amerindians tell how otters chase away caiman simply by force of numbers. And here, too, the Caymans beat a tactical retreat. A long dry spell has seen the water level sink in the lake. South American storks, Jabiru, gather in the drying pool. The fully grown birds have a bright red neckband. They're looking for food, insects and amphibians, in the drying mud. Muscovy ducks come here in their molting season. For a while, the ducks have no flight feathers. Understandably, they're nervous and on their guard. The caiman seem to know the ducks are vulnerable. They cooperate to keep them away from the shore. A shove and a nip establish the hierarchy among the caiman, but it won't distract them from the hunt. The duck's only defense is to dive out of the way at the last moment. Sometimes too late. The biggest and strongest caiman gets the duck. Caiman don't just hunt ducks in these waters. Other birds also figure among their prey. Amerindians say caiman will jump out of the water to catch the birds in the trees. And that's given Young the idea for his next experiment. He hangs bait on a line above the river. The caiman are obviously interested. But none is prepared to jump.
Maybe it was just a legend. Is this something the Cayman can't do? Then a dominant Cayman brushes the others away. Big Cayman can do what they like. Time for an action replay. Cayman will gather wherever they regularly find food. Their calls and gestures indicate which is the alpha animal and which is the subordinate. The alpha male gets to eat first. But there's an understanding between them. Especially when the prey is this big. A Cayman's jaws are built to snap shut, not to bite or chew. So the alpha male needs help to pull it apart. And he gets it. The trick will be to twist in opposite directions. That way, everyone gets something. A caiman's eyes are remarkable. They see in color. The advantage is clear if you imagine a caiman's world in black and white. You'd miss a lot. The long vertical pupils open especially wide, so Cayman can see in the dark. And tonight, we're going to find out what Cayman can do in the hours of darkness. Without the Cayman's all-seeing eyes, we need technology. Night vision cameras using the light of the moon and the stars. And the beam of the infrared camera reflects in the Cayman's eyes. A highly reflective coating on their retina makes use of every ray of light. As a result, Cayman can be just as active by night as by day. They're also much braver. They come right up to the boat. The mottled surface of a caiman's skin creates almost no bow waves. That means its prey has little warning of its approach.
we try switching on our torches. Caiman don't like the sudden change. They pull back into the water. We don't know if it's a purely physical reaction to the light in the darkness, or whether they interpret artificial light as a threat. At the water's edge, our light picks up a browsing peccary. Switching off the torch and filming with the infrared camera captures a more authentic scene. This peccary and its troop are sniffing for roots and small animals in the shallows. The caiman gaze steadily on. Until one attacks. There are more caiman in the water at night than during the day. One casually swims out in front of the boat. Another comes up alongside. The boat's about seven meters long. The caiman is almost exactly the same length. We never saw him during the day. If he wanted to, he could easily capsize the boat. The next morning, I want one last chance at filming Cayman close up underwater. They're clever, shy, and careful. So the solution must be camouflage. I just hope they don't recognize me as a human being. The site will be the one the Cayman are used to, with the vultures and the bucket. All I need is a snorkel and plenty of time. The idea is to look like a pile of water weeds. And keep completely still. Slowly, all the animals settle or drift back to their familiar places. When the first vulture goes for the bait, the caiman will know it's safe to move in. But if they approach slower than usual, it's because there's a foreign body in their way. It probably doesn't correspond with anything they've seen before. But then greed gets the better of caution.
one has taken the lead, they all follow and come closer and closer. No caiman would voluntarily expose its soft, vulnerable throat to a big mammal. I seem to have merged right into the background. That could be dangerous if the caiman decides to brush the weed aside. This is one big beast. These reptiles aren't going anywhere until all the bait has been eaten. After a long wait, I can surface. Chilly, but happy. This is the closest anyone has ever filmed a caiman. Yeah, I have to see it. That was a big one, eh? Yeah, it's actually two and a half times your size, I guess. So it's estimated five meter plus, or? Oh, oh, that's, so yeah. that's a big one. It was really scary. Okay. <laughs> I know. I've seen the whole body. I, I have seen only the feet. The feet very close to me. Huge feet. Okay, you can see it in the mind, so it's very huge, you know? Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. And the feet and so on. Yeah. I'm still shivering. <laughs> Maybe from the water, or I don't know why. It was cold. Okay. But we got it finally. Yeah. Great shot. Yeah. yeah. This was a real adventure. <laughs>